technology. The other live was buffering. I couldn't go back, so I had to start live. <laughs> oh, goodness. I hate technology sometimes. So sorry, guys. I hope you come back to my new stream. Ah. I was talking about this Coca-Cola bottle that I found at the Bill Outlet. No one's doing it. Oh, my goodness. Oh, goodness gracious. Oh, you guys are slowly coming back. So sorry. I hate technology. <laughs> uh, hi again. Sorry. Seems to happen 50% of the time. Starts buffering. I got to start a new stream. <laughs> I was right in the middle of talking about this. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> about this Coca-Cola thick bottle. And wondering if it was worth $1,000. I need Vinny. I need Vinny's expertise. Or um, anyone else says expert. Oh, um, oh, my vintage, I think, is expert. I know. You told everyone. Oh, thank you, Laura. Told everyone that my internet sucks. Hi, Kiwi. I'm glad you guys followed me over. So sorry. I know nothing. I know. I don't know. I don't collect Coca-Cola memorabilia or any kind of pop, pop stuff. Memorabilia, not memorabilia, antiques. Oh, soft box lighting kit. Oh, I should write that down. Hold on. Oh, my vintage. Do you guys, do you know anything about a really thick Coca-Cola bottle from um, Portland, uh, bottled in Portland, Oregon? Which is not too far from me. Okay, what did you say? Light. Oh, it won't give you ring light. Soft box. Soft box lighting kit. I wonder how much it is. Ah! Anyways, if you guys know anything about this, let me know. Uh, the other thing I got... Oh, I know. Darn it. The other thing I got was, um, look at this cute tin. Oh, he's much more knowledgeable. Okay, I'll ask him. But look at this really cute tin. It's just a candy tin, but also a, like, a piggy bank. And I don't think it's that old. It's called Churchill's Heritage of England Post Office Money Box. It, dairy toffees were in here. I found this at the bins. It's real lightweight. I'm thinking about selling this. And then if it didn't sell, I would definitely keep it. $78. I just looked it up. Oh, okay. Oh, I don't know. It's probably worth it though, right guys? It seems like a lot to me, but it's probably worth it. Anyway, that was one fine. And then I found this Starbucks cup, but I just noticed there's a chip on it. Ugh. Isn't the yeah, Lynn, that that tin is really cute. I like if I saw this in a candy store, I would buy it not for the candy, but for the tin. I got a Starbucks cup, but it had a chip on it. At least I didn't spend a lot on it. I hate when I spend several dollars and it's I don't know. Yeah, if I don't want the ring light in my eyes, because I don't know, it just weirds me out. Um, I found a lot of little stuff. Those are the first ones that came up on Amazon. Okay. I like it. Um, I have Prime. So, I don't know. I'll probably pay it. But look at this. It's got a real intricate look to it. And um, this is, I think this is glass, like a frosted glass. And I don't know what that says on the bottom. But isn't that cool? It looks real Victorian-y. You know, it's probably, it's probably like from the 70s and, and they tried to make it look Victorian-y. I don't know. Every time I find something like this, it's usually from the 70s when like the Vic Victorian look was coming back. And this was by glass. So this was only 69 cents a pound. I 
I'm not sure if I'll sell it or not. Um, and you know, this does this. Yeah, it's gorgeous. I just love the details. I couldn't believe this was at the bins. This was off for people look through it. I never have luck selling these in my sales Lennox. People don't, I don't know. But I saw this little bud vase and it's Lennox. And I just, they were about to take the bins away. And I just hate seeing this stuff get trashed, you know, in the dump. This is really cute. Lennox, um, what is it? Oh, a set of three. There's supposed to be three of them. But look at the bottom. I don't know. Do you guys ever feel bad for <laughs> antiques, you know? Like they're about to get thrown away or like the end of a garage sale. And they're like, oh, we're just like, some people are like, oh, we're just going to get a, a dump, take it all to the dump or get a bin and dump it. It's like, oh, so depressing. And at the bins, there's been so many times where I just get there and they're rolling out the bin away to be trashed. And I'm like, oh, hold on, hold on. I'm like trying to save stuff grabbing it I don't know some of this stuff I mean I literally saved you know this isn't clothes or anything or like shoes that stuff they'll send to third world countries or to factories and stuff to uh, soak up oil and stuff but like a lot of this vintage antique stuff just goes to the dump they pay a dump fee I know like I don't know. It drives me nuts. Like, why don't you just donate it? Uh, I don't know anything about these, but they're North Dakota. Little salt and pepper shakers with that luster wear. And they're real good condition. <laughs> I know. You save dumb crap. You buy dumb crap all the time. But this, this is considered glassware. I don't think these are super old. It says made in China. This is glassware. So again, this is real lightweight. So are there a lot of garage sales going around in your guys' area? There's hardly any garage sales in my area. Today it's raining. Um, but nothing's going on. No one's having rummage sales. It's not really any flea markets because... No one wants to have a bunch of people gather in one place. And garage sales are kind of real minuscule. Or when I see the pictures of estate sales, it's like, eh. You know, is it worth it to drive all the way to Portland? It doesn't look that great. So, I don't know. I'm hoping it gets better. Now, I forget the name of this. And um, uh, Real Nifty Vintage sold something like this with this pattern. Me too. I feel bad when I see family pictures. Oh, tons of Grisel Sacramento. Oh, wow, I'm jealous. Oh, he went to an old mansion. Oh, my gosh, that's awesome. Yeah, and I have the kids with me, so if I go to any state sales, I got to take them, and they get they get bored. But look at, didn't, didn't, um, didn't Real Nifty Vintage sell something like this? Well, Shars Nest, if you go to the bins, it's three hours away. Make sure you make it worth your time and stay all day. So I forget what this is called. But uh, Real Nifty Vintage, he, um, he sold like a plate in this pattern. And I was thinking, oh, I have the little like dish with the lid. I think I'm going to sell this in my um, sale on Tuesday. I don't know if I can get the same price as he does, though. Oh, this is so funny. Okay, I'm not even going to read it. <laughs> you guys read it. Wait, can you read it? Wait. Why is that focusing? Ah! Why isn't it focus? I don't know if you can see it. <laughs> can you see it? Focus. Oh. I don't know if you can read that. It's 
pretty okay i'll read it i thought she's saying to her uh the guy saying to his friend i thought everything in texas was big I, think I thought that was pretty funny. I saved it from the bins. Oh, yeah, Laura. If you ever go on a road trip, though, like, you should definitely check out. So, um, sometimes when I go on road trips, I'll check out other bins. But you got to spend some time there. You can't just go for, like, 30 minutes, 40 minutes. Like, if you're going to do a road trip, you got to spend some time at it to make it worth it. Because I've... I, known people that have gone. They're like, oh, there's nothing there. It's like, no, you got to spend time. I don't have any near me. Oh, I see. I, my mom first took me to the bins when I was like, I think around 22, around there, early 20s. And this was when the bins were nasty. <laughs> they were so dirty. And it was in this like kind of warehouse um, and it was like falling apart. And I thought it was the coolest thing ever. I'm like, oh wow. And this is when you could get really cool stuff. And um, I didn't realize that they were around. And 20 years later, I'm still going to the bins. Um, but they've cleaned up quite a bit. But you know, every bins is different. I've seen videos of some bins. I'm like, oh, that looks kind of scary. <laughs> oh gosh, you can see my, the, the crap in my background. Um, but, uh, and you never know, like, with the bins, what you're gonna find. Like, some people will go on, like, oh, I didn't see any, like, antiques or breakables. It's like, well, it depends on the day, what people donate, what they bring. Um, this day, there was a lot of, uh, raw donations, means that people just donate it, Goodwill didn't even look at it, and they put it in the bins. And it's like when they have too much stuff. Like, I found this. And see, this looks like the kind of Victorian-y, and then it has a 1970, I don't know, that, two on the back. So that's back in the 70s where they were like bringing back kind of like the Victorian delicate look thing. I thought it was a cute little dish. I don't know what you could use it for, but isn't that pretty? I really like stuff like that. I'm starting to get into that. I'll probably sell this. You like the mug, Laura? <laughs> I just thought it was funny. I was like, I can't let this go to the dump. That's hilarious. Um, oh, I couldn't believe. Well, this girl, oh, her arm fell off. So I have a collection of, is it for lemons? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea. Um, Madame Alexander dolls. I don't know if it's Madame or Madame. But I found the... Oh my gosh. Look at how pretty she is. And it was just sitting there. She's missing her sock. So these sell anywhere from $25 to $100 each. Depending on how rare they are. Which ones they are. And she's adorable. And then this little girl... Her arm fell off. I think I can reattach her arm. Oh, you're back, Nathaniel. But her her body parts are real loose. But look at that face. I mean, I'm just going to keep her. Her arm's missing. She even has her original bouquet. I know. The dolls are so pretty. I used to collect all kinds of dolls. Now I just collect them if I see them at thrift stores or garage sales for cheap. The Madame Alexander ones, I can't resist. But I usually don't pay more than a few dollars. I, I got limited a budget. Um, and then I found some animals. And these are the, uh, these. if you see these, there's the Schleich Germany animals. They're not like the cheap ones. They're the kind that... Um, you can get these at Target, and usually they're about $3 each that they sell new for these. They're the quality ones. Like, they'll last a long time. This one, I can't read it. This might be Schleich. But if you ever see these, pick them up. They're the heavy, thick plastic. They're the German brand, and, you know, this is not like China stuff. Oh, yeah, you should do that. 
Yeah, just to make a road trip of it. Totally. That would, yeah, that'd be fun for you. Then I don't know, like maybe the same person donated um, vintage stuff because I found like all these different items that kind of look like they went to with each other. Again, this is like probably 70s. It has that Victorian look. Pismo Beach. Oh, I'd love to go to the beach. Yeah, well, um, one thing about the Goodwill bins that by me, there are people there, if you can't stand for very long and stuff, they'll bring those, I know this is like, you think they're just for old people, but they're for everyone. Those walkers that have a seat on them, and a lot, there are women and men that can't stand for very long, so they'll bring those walkers and they'll sit on them as they're looking through the bins or if they need to rest and stuff. So, Laura, if you don't have one, that's a good thing to bring. And then you can sit and look through the bin or you can stand, look through the bin. If you need to sit down, you have a seat there. So a lot of people that go to the bins use that. I don't live in Seattle. I'm about mm, three hours away. Seattle's more up north. I'm closer to Portland, Oregon. I'm like 45 minutes away from Portland, Oregon. So I thought this was kind of neat. It's plastic, probably from the 70s, but again, there's that Victorian kind of look. And then I've never seen, it's metal, and I've never seen these in this, this square form before. I thought I could, um, I don't know, do something cool with it. Again, from the 70s. You know, this might be from like the same person, because all this stuff is like from the 70s. <laughs> Oh, nice. I miss California. I've done so many road trips to California. Oh, wow. I'm watching say Oak Harbor. I'm not sure where Oak Harbor is. <laughs> it's a pride thing. I know. I know. My dad is... Um, when I was 20, I was in Seattle. Oh, yes, that's true. My dad, he's seven. He's in his early 70s, and he has, um, he has like, foot problems and stuff, and he broke his hip uh, over a year ago and stuff, and they were having him on, with a walker. There's so many times he refused to, do, to use his walker. I'm like, Dad, just use the stinking walker because you might fall. Well, he fell, again, a couple times. And uh, he doesn't use, he doesn't need the walker anymore. But I was like, dad, he's like, oh, it's just old people using the walker. I'm like, do you want to fall and break your hip again? <laughs> use the walker. So I would make him use his stinking walker. <laughs> he doesn't need it anymore. But, um, you know, after he had his hip surgery and stuff, like he needed it. He could barely walk. Like he almost fell down and he's like close to 200 pounds. And I'm like, dad, if you fall. I'm not catching you. I'm going to break my back catching you. <laughs> See, that happens when you get old. He's not even that old. He's just got a lot of health issues. And I got this. Just changing the subject. Fruit dish. This is not my style. But it's made in Germany. And I know people tend to like this kind of stuff. Like the fruit. The fruit dishes. It's in pretty good condition. I need to clean it. Just clean it with a wet cloth. I don't know what the M stands for. Are you serious? 89? He won't use a free, freaking walker? I know. I would get so mad at my dad. I was like, Dad. And he, he did fall a couple times when I wasn't there. And I'm like, oh, my God. I was like, what if you broke your hip again? He's like, well, I didn't. And I was like, well, yeah, but you could have. <laughs> and I was like, and I'm an only child. So it's just me helping him plus my aunt and uncle help a little bit too but there's no other kids to help him I'm like, I'm like I don't have to tell you dad he's got a lot of health issues <laughs> oh <laughs> get a cane well if you do go to the bins Laura you're gonna have to bring something well yeah my dad's a Vietnam veteran and, uh, 
he's one of those stubborn Vietnam veteran uh, dads. <laughs> Oh my gosh, you live in Sweden? That would be a long trip. Oh, I see, your dad's 74, close to my dad, yeah. Wow, 95 and still walk. he was still walking five miles a day, that's good. That's really good. Got this cute little cup. Now this is not my style, but I thought it was cute, it's bone, it's clay craft fine bone china. And I know some people like these little cute cups. Look how little it is. From the bins. Glassware. I saved it. I'm going to sell this. You're getting off subject talking about <laughs> old men. <laughs> uh, there was this one bin at the Goodwill. And this lady was looking through it. I was like, oh, you know, hurry up. Go away. So I want to look. And she left most of the stuff. And it was a bunch of littles. <laughs> 89 and um, I don't know I think Littles kind of sells well for me but look at this cute little thing <laughs> Terry Ann's funny a little hand painted ceramic owl I thought this was wood at first but it's ceramic and look at they hand painted that they did such an awesome job and even if it's ceramic, um, it's considered glassware at the, the bins, Goodwill Outlet, and um, it's uh, 69 cents a pound. And my last sale, I sold a lot of little things, so I'm thinking um, I'll have good luck again, hopefully, so little things. And then there was like this little duck, ceramic duck, hand painted. I was so happy when the lady walked away, I was like, woo! -hoo -hoo. And there was just like tons of little stuff. There might have been more. I came after it had been looked through by several people. I know it's like cutie. Look at this. It's a tiny little picture. It could almost be for like a doll. And it's uh, like clay. You know, made out of clay, painted. And I don't know what these are like for a dollhouse. They're two little pots. They're like ceramic. These are ceramic. Wow. Well, you're a trooper, Laura. You are a trooper. German stoneware. Maybe there's no markings on it. The the mark the sticker came off. Oh, you're not too late, Joanne. I had to start a new uh live feed because I was buffering on the other one. I'm just showing my Goodwill outlet. Oh, and then remember Think, oh, you know, this I bought at Google Retail Store, but I already sold one duck like this. So I got another one. I'm thinking it's Odegari, but there's no tag on it. Odegari. Then I got this little guy. He's ceramic. I thought, usually I see these, like, you know, rubber or plastic from the Lion King. He was in with that bin full of little stuff. And then here's a hand-painted duck. All this was in the same bin. Hand-painted ceramic duck. And, and then this is just, I think this goes on a pot. It's just a little squirrel. It's that, it's that pla heavy plastic material. But it, see, it has a groove. And I think it's supposed to go on a little uh, planter's pot. Yeah, Simba! I, I wanted to find, I know there's other pieces for it, but I only found him. And then this is, I don't know what this is. It's a glass acorn, and then it has a hole here to, like, stick it on something. What is that? See? <laughs> I don't know what it is, but it only cost me a little bit. Yeah, so I got all this stuff at the bins. Now, all this is considered glassware. If it's ceramic or glass or porcelain, it's all considered glassware. So then 69 cents a pound. Um, and then, uh, 
So this is uh, ceramic. And I think this is newer. I think this might be Target. But isn't it a cute little doggy, gold doggy? It looks like a terri little terrier. I got that real little. And then I'm not really into planters, but this is a Rubens Japan uh, planter. <laughs> to hold string cheese. <laughs> I don't know. And you pay by the pound of the bins. Yes. So, like, every bins is different, the pricing. Hi, Joanne. Well, yeah, it depends on the bins. So, the Portland bins, uh, they open like, I think, a month ago. And then the Vancouver bins just opened, like, a couple weeks ago. So, it just depends. But the bins are, like, uh, miscellaneous clothes all that is pay uh, you pay by the pound it's cheaper if you buy more like if it's over 25 pounds you, uh it's cheaper someone i saw someone yeah i think so um and then the glass the glass is 69 cents a pound books are for kids books it's like 40 cents a book kids books and then regular books softback dollar each uh, two dollars each for the hardback so not the greatest deal for the books Except if you're getting kids. Um, and then, what else? Electronics is also 69 cents a pound. But I know every bins around the United States is priced a little different. So this is considered glassware. And I did notice after I bought, there's a little chipping on the, the flowers. I mean, it's so delicate. But besides that, I think it's good. I'm not really into planters, but I've seen planters sell. Oh, and then my friend was at the bins earlier. I found this one glass frog, frog, you know, put the flowers in. She said the whole bin was filled with these. And she's like, oh, I didn't know you wanted them. I would have picked them up for you. This was the only one that was left. So I got one and it's by glass weight. So this is kind of heavy. So it probably cost me about a buck, but I was like, oh my God. So she didn't know. I mean, you know, I don't expect her to grab stuff for me. Nathaniel, oh yeah. Well, if if you ever come, if you ever make a trip to the United States, you need to shop at the bins. I know, Laura. It's like I wish she hadn't even told me, cause now I'm like, oh darn it, I I missed out, you know. But it's okay. Uh, oh, I got this, but this I got at a Goodwill retail. Yeah, I know. She said, I said, well, someone else grabbed them. This is one of those deers that people hand paint. I didn't get this at the bins. I bought this at a retail store. Um, oh, and I thought this was cool. Look, it's a... Um, not a timer. What do you call these? Oh my gosh, a sand, a sand thing. Yeah, Nate, you gotta you gotta come here. You gotta come here. You have plenty of people that will shop with you if you come to the United States. I thought this was really cool. This I paid even though it's part glass, I paid regular weight price for this. Hourglass. There you go. <laughs> I had a brain fart. You know, I am so surprised by what comes through, too. I think sometimes people don't want to have, like, an estate sale and stuff. So, like, they'll just box everything up and donate stuff. I mean, that's why you'll find stuff like this. Like, there'll be families, like, we don't have, want to have an estate sale, and so they'll just donate it all, you know. Um, got more little. Oh! Uh... Catching the next slide, bringing dumplings. Nice. Anyone? Okay. I got this. And it's glass. And it has no markings on it. And I don't know anything about it. Um, it's got that rainbow kind of sheen to it. It's heavy. But what do you guys 
think it's um it kind of it kind of looks like one of those uh what is it called fenton it's real heavy i don't know if this is new or old it does have a seam a glass seam on the back from the mold you know <sighs> do not touch please wait till they are put out on shelf heck we could be waiting hours oh geez <laughs> So I don't know. You guys know anything about this? It's sanded on the bottom, flat. It. I don't know. Well, I don't know if it's milk glass. It has a rainbow sheen to it. See how it's rainbowy? So that I don't know if that's still considered milk glass. Milk glass with some rainbow color. But I hate to sell this if I don't know what it is. That's why I always stop selling those frogs. What did Joanne say? Oh, so Joanne, uh, Joanne, not everything is from the Goodwill retail store. And that's off, often a misconception. Uh, misconception is, um, yeah, so some stuff is from the Goodwill retail store. A lot of stuff is raw donations. So there's several ways that the bins get items. One of the ways is they get stuff from the Goodwill retail store that doesn't sell, that comes over. Another way is raw donations. That means they come straight to the Goodwill outlet. People just donate to the outlet. Sometimes they go through stuff. Sometimes they don't have time because there's too much stuff and they just put it out in the, in the bins. That's called raw donations. Another thing what will happen is they will get shipments from Goodwill retail stores. The stuff never ends up on the Goodwill retail stores shelves because they get so much stuff that they can't keep up. So they will put that stuff in trucks and that will get shipped to another area, such as stuff from like Seattle retail stores. They have too much stuff. They'll ship it to the bins. They just got to they gotta keep it going. Goodwill gets so much donations. I mean, especially after this quarantine, there was lines of cars all the way out in the street donating stuff. They can't keep up. So sometimes at the bins, you'll see stuff with no uh, Goodwill Goodwill tags or anything. And you're like, well, I don't understand if does this all come retail store and it doesn't. It's And one of the best times to go um to the goodwill bins is right before the new year because everyone is donating stuff to get that tax write off yeah so like a good time to go would be gosh october november and december even into january because the overflow will go into the new year so those are the times where people aren't having garage sales uh, it's cold and rainy outside, so they don't feel like, you know, having a, having a garage sale or dealing with that. They'll donate a bunch of stuff or they're like, oh, the new year's almost up. I want that tax write off. So a lot of times you'll see tons of raw donations in those years. And then it kind of slowed down in the spring. And then, you know, it's kind of like rotation. Uh... There, I, we have a lot of, in the Northwest here, we have a lot of retail stores and stuff. Um, so, yeah, there's, there's like, within a few miles. I mean, not right next door or anything, but um, that if that's what you were meaning. But, yeah, so, it's kind of, it's kind of interesting. I talked to a manager once at the bins, and, oh, my gosh, I've talked about this before, but he told me, how many millions of dollars they spend um, paying for dump fees and stuff and how much stuff gets thrown away. So at the bins that I go to, they will literally bring stuff out in bins. It's sitting there for maybe sometimes just like two hours because they're constantly rotating. And then once that's gone from the bins, that's it. That's it. Either it gets donated to third world countries like the clothes or to factories, you know, clean up the oil spills and stuff for the clothes. 
but he says a lot of the stuff just gets dumped and you know and they pay so much money yeah the dump fees yeah Nathaniel, for you too the dump fees are huge and he said they used to recycle furniture like the wood and stuff and that contract ended so now even the furniture gets thrown in the dump instead of being recycled which is really sad because all that wood that it took to make that furniture is just being thrown away and not recycled but they said they lost the contract with the recyclers for the wood furniture so yeah yeah garage sales this year sucks for garage sales for me people use charity oh they're called like charity shops i know in other countries they call them different things instead of thrift stores they call them uh cher shops as dumping grounds oh man and coffee so you wouldn't believe it i didn't find just two madame alexander dolls i found one another one and this she even has the stand in her original shoes isn't she cute and think about all the books all those books i know yeah, I know the it for the clothes. It sounds like they have a lot of different areas for the clothes, like you know, like third world countries and uh, that need it, and uh, rags for uh, companies. But like the miscellaneous and the furniture and the books and all that just gets dumped. Oh, I'm reading your comments. So this was an interesting find, and this somehow got past Goodwill because usually they don't have sh uh, scissors and knives and stuff in the bins because they don't want people to get cut. Well, this came in raw donations, and I found a really good quality scissors and silverware, and I just picked through the, I didn't really get much silver. I was interested in the scissors. It's kind of heavy. I, I, don't, I don't know how much this weighs. Oh, are they animals? Oh, no. Don, I've seen some YouTube videos of people's bins. I'm like, holy moly, that's nuts. So I have three bins within 45-minute drive from me. And the bins that's closest to me is not too bad. Uh, and then there's the Portland bins, and there's the bins in McLaughlin. And they are aggressive there, and it's kind of, stressful i used to go there all the time when i lived closer but i don't like to go there too much because i know some of the people who are aggressive and they're scary and the bin store needs a bin store to give away yeah it should be like bins number bins outlet number two so i picked up some so like i don't these aren't silver i don't know i can't read Thunderbird. Some cool pieces. I didn't want to get all that because it's heavy, you know. thought that was kind of cool. And then, I don't know. These didn't weigh too much. Commemorative uh, spoons, you know, like uh, Australia, Washington. <laughs> I'm in Washington. Idaho. And then, I tested all these scissors. I found a piece of paper in the bins, I test each one and they work perfect. Look at these. This is like the hardcore expensive scissors. It says FAR USA. This isn't messing around. So I did pay over $2 a pound for these. So how much did I pay? I don't know. For all of these, I probably like $3. Yeah. And so when I was buying them, the cashier, she's like, oh, those are in the bins. She's like, we're not supposed to be selling sharp things in the bins. I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. They were in the donations. <laughs> yes. And they all worked. Look at this one. This one's from Brazil. Oh, these are nice. And my husband's like, why did you buy scissors? I'm like, to resell. I'm like, they're not cheap dollar store. Oh, I already showed that one. Look at this one. That was like a weapon. It says Joy USA 78. Oh, the one in Arkansas is trash. 
This one's kind of curved. Yeah, you know, it depends what, I don't know. All the bins are different, what you get, I guess. I saw one bins that people were shopping at New York, and it was, I don't think I would shop there. It looked really dark, dingy, and the people were extremely aggressive. Little ones, and these all work. I gotta research them. I have some scissors that are worth more. Yeah, they look medical. Do you think so, some of these might be medical and some might be for sewing? Like these all kind of look medical. But they're all quality. We got these little ones. Oh no, it's really trash to never even be there. Oh, that's too bad. They're all good. Oh no, only clothing? Well, that's frustrating. And I've actually seen bins um, on on YouTube, people's bins, that they had like glassware on shelves. Um, and I don't know if they were by the pound, but they had like clothes and shoes and everything in bins, but they had glassware on shelves. Now our glassware is in totes, which are in bins. So if people, you know, wrestling through things, things will get broken. Um, hopefully they're not. Like, I was surprised these were not broken. Oh, no. How long did you stay at the bins? I'd be disappointed, too, if there's only clothes. Like, I get clothes, but, like, sometimes in the mood to get, like, glassware. <gasps> I almost dropped it. Like, these weren't broken. And these are glass-blown ornaments. Look at how cute these are. It's a rooster and this fancy chicken lady. I'm going to sell these because it's, it's not something I collect. But these weren't broken. I was like, how are these not broken? I think they're in good condition. A little, a little bit messed up. I'm just so surprised. Because <laughs> sometimes I hear people, like, clanking through stuff. I feel like... You know, relax. Oh, no, yeah. I want to... Oh, good. So they never sell glassware? Or was it just that... So they don't sell glassware at all? It's Or was it just that day? Oh, I'll show this first. I know! So all the stuff I got was in the totes, in the bins... You know, none of it was broken. Well, I mean, little chips here and there. So, I mean, I got lucky. <laughs> yeah, the funny little shoe. I don't know. It's so it boggles my mind. But hey, I'm not. You know, I'm not complaining. Oh, I forgot. There's more in this. There's so much. Um, I was really excited about this. I hardly ever find stuff like this in the bins. It's a vintage little. Makeup compact. And look, it has the mirror. And I think, is it supposed to open again? Wait. Is it open again or no? I'm confused. It looks like it's supposed to open again. Oh, only close all the time. Well, that sucks. Ugh, I wouldn't like that. Ugh. Their bins are deep. Our bins aren't that deep. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. I don't know if that opens again. Anyways, I want to keep this. It's got that shell with uh, some or like uh, floral design. Ew. The powder just <laughs> There's powder in there. I can't open that other part. I never find stuff like this in the bins. I don't know why. <laughs> the rest of the life preserve. You want to hear something creepy? Um, I don't know if it's creepy, but I've seen moms throw their kids into the bins. Not like literally throw them, but they, this is more than one time and um, their kids were crawling or walking in the bins <laughs> of stuff. I said, I think two times I said something. I said, you know, 
you never know what's in the bins. I so said, you got to be careful in case there's something breakable. And each time they're like, oh, yeah, yeah, they're fine. They're fine. I've probably seen it five or six different parents do that. And the kids were like, you know, two, three years old, and they let them play around in it. And I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> I know. Poor kids. I know. This one, this one kid like jumped from the shopping cart into the bin and the mom was talking to another mom and I was like, oh my gosh, it scared me because I thought the kid was going to fall and he was like all over the place and I said something to the mom and she was like, oh, he's fine. He's fine. And I was like, oh my God. Yeah, I, I, I said something nicely, but there's nothing else I could do. And I even said to the manager, I was like, and they'll go, there's nothing we can do. Yeah. And this is not just one family. This Throughout my years, I've seen about four or five parents do that. I know. It is. It's, it's I don't know, it's disturbing. Oh, yeah, wood. The compact. Yeah, the reason I'm keeping this is because I never find this at the bins. I'm like, I can't believe it. I was really excited. I love stuff like that. And I found this little box. And every time I find a little box like this, I always open it. And, excuse me, I saw these little, they don't have the backings, but these cute little, uh, you're teasing me. <laughs> you're like, I want that. These cute little earrings. I think it's like glass. They don't have the backings, but they were in the box. You know, this is so lightweight. This probably cost me, what, like three cents? And I, I like the box. Like, you know, like three pennies, and I'll buy that. And then, um, oh, this is really cute. This, when I saw this, reminds me of uh, Joanne. From a work in progress because she likes the Hummel characters. Reminds me of the Hummel characters. Oh, yeah. So, Joanne, some place, some Goodwill uh, outlets won't let you fill. Mine, they're okay with it. Um, I even had a worker at the Goodwill outlet take a picture of me. I said, oh, it's my YouTube channel. And he's like, oh, let me take a picture of you with the shopping cart. And so, it depends on the management, each one. You prefer to shop thrift alone? Yeah, me too. Unfortunately, I have to bring my kids sometimes, and they get bored really quickly, so I can't stay long. Or I'll tell them, just go and wait in the car. Oh, I got this, and I hardly ever find it. The Cinnabar Asian Little um, Compact. I've These are worth money. I had a, I had a vase just like this. Yeah, they're not cheap. The compacts are not cheap. I had a vase just like this, and I sold it for, I think, close to, around to $70 for the vase that was about this big. So I'm excited to find this little, this little gem. Nathaniel, you like Simbar? Yeah, it's really cool. I, only one time, in the 20 years, I found the vase, and this is my second time finding Simbar. Per, great condition. So I'm going to have to look this up. The vase sold for around 70 so I don't know how much this will sell for. And in that same bin, I found this tiny little candlestick. And I don't know, this might be for a dollhouse. Oh my gosh. Are you serious, Laura? That's nuts. Now, this is kind of controversial. I've had discussions on mom groups about this years ago. My oldest son was a runner. Oh, nice. That will pay for all my stuff. If I sell this for 40, that would literally pay for everything plus profit. So my son, when he was little, around two, he was considered a runner. So what a runner is, is a kid that will not stay with you. And if you hold their hand, they try to run off. Which means that the kid will run into the street. They don't see consequences. They'll run into the street. They'll run around aisles and stuff. So my um, 
I have two boys that are less than two years apart. My oldest son um, has some, a little bit of developmental issues and stuff, and he was a runner. So I put him on a leash. I've had, I've had women judge me saying no kid should ever be on a leash. I had one, and I explained to this one woman how my child was a runner. It was hard to have him near me when I was holding my other son who was a baby and a leash was needed. And it wasn't a leash that you hold like for a dog. I would hook it onto my uh, pant loop and I hooked it onto um, him, like on his uh, belt buckle. Uh, not belt buckle, but belt loop. So he would try to run and then he'd get tucked back. <laughs> and I'm like, see, don't run. And the times I didn't have him on the leash, this was only like for a year that I had to do this. He, uh, I wasn't quite paying attention and he ran through the store and almost out the door into the street until I caught him. I ran, I grabbed his shirt. I was like, no. <laughs> and that freaked me out. Oh my gosh. Oh no. What a crazy mom. I know. And so I, I told this whole, all the situation to this, I think she was a grandmother online. And she's like, I still don't agree with leashes. And I was like, all right, well, <laughs> if your kid never needed a leash, that's great. <laughs> I was like, but my kid did. So it's kind of a controversial thing, but I was like, I don't, I don't care what anyone thinks. I'm doing what works for us. Oh, this doesn't fit in here. So anyways, that's my two cents about kids running around. But it's like for a dollhouse. And look at these two little, they're so tiny. I thought this would fit. But, um, anywho, yeah. There's kids that are runners. Gotta keep them in line. Yeah, um, oh, and another time, they were old, my kids were older. Oh, do you collect those? These are real tiny, Joanne. Um, so another time, this is kind of a funny story. Trader Joe's is a, a healthy grocery store. And, and um, hold on, I'm going to read Terry Ann's message. My daughter had a harness one and I had a new baby and total strangers would cuss me out. And that was over 40 years ago, but it was hard to hold both of them. Yeah, exactly. Like I had my one son, Brando, as a baby, then Mateo, who was a runner, and he was kind of delayed developmentally anyways. And I was like, oh my God, I'm putting a, I'm putting a leash on him. Oh, that's cool, Joanne. You got a bunch of them. But one time, this was stupid of me. And Laura, you're going <laughs> to get a kick out of this. Took the kids. Brando was probably about two. Mateo was about four into uh, the grocery store. And I thought, oh, they can walk. They don't need, I don't need to put them in the shopping cart. So they were getting kind of tired. I was at the checkout stand. Brando decided <laughs> to start climbing up, you know, the boxes of cheap wine. They have at Trader Joe's that they stack them up. He decided to start climbing up the boxes of wine as like a play structure and Mateo started getting into everything on the on the uh, checkout stand on the shelves. So I got this one climbing. I'm like, oh my, and I'm waiting at the cashier. I'm like, oh my God. So I go over and I'm like, I had to pick which kid to get to first. So I go to Brando first. I'm like, holy crap. So I'm so mad and embarrassed. So I take him, don't say anything. I take him off the wine boxes. I put him in the shopping cart. Then I take Mateo, I put him in the shopping cart, and I just leave, I just leave Mateo and leave the shopping cart and leave the cashier while I'm taking Brando. Oh no, I forgot. Shopping carts were outside. I left my two kids with the cashier, just left, didn't say anything, brought the shopping cart inside, because I didn't have a shopping cart. Then I took Brando, put in the shopping cart, took Mateo shopping. I didn't say one word. I didn't say anything to the cashier or the kids. I just did that. Then I pushed them outside and I was yelling. I was like, Oh my God. I was like, I can't believe how embarrassing. I, am. I can't believe you guys did that. 
Oh, I chewed them out. They were two and four. Like, oh! They never did that again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I forgot to mention that part. I didn't have a shopping cart. I thought, oh, they'll be fine walking around. No. Yeah, I literally didn't say anything. The cashier was probably like, what is she doing? And I was like, I got to contain these kids. Oh, my gosh. I have stories. My kids are... Bleh. <laughs> one time, one time, Mateo decided, I was shopping at a clothing store, and he decided to crawl underneath the clothing rack and not come out. And they had Brenda, who was a baby. And I was like, Mateo, come on, come on. So I was debating to go leave him in the store, go in my car, and, and put Brando, strap Brando, and come back. And luckily, there was a lady there that was Mateo's uh, preschool teacher. And uh, she actually helped me. She's like, oh, she's like, I know Mateo. Because he went, he went to a special preschool for kids that were um, developmentally delayed. And she's like, oh, I know Mateo. Do you want me to help you? I was like, great. <laughs> so she actually helped me pick up Mateo. And I had my other son, Brando. And uh, yeah, we put him in the cart. Yeah, I know, right? Motherhood. Nathaniel, what, oh. Nathaniel, what are you talking about? They didn't let her get away with laughing. Nathaniel, talk about using your kids. I think I missed something in the chat. So anyways, those are my two little stories about my kids when they were little. Now, they're 10 and 12 now. Yeah, my son has speech delays, too. That was part of, that was part of it. Oh, no. My sister and I crashed a shopping cart into a tower of cans once. Oh, my gosh. I would have died. Yeah, it's embarrassing because you're like, everyone's judging me and looking at me. I'm like, oh, my God. I was like, I'm so sorry. So what that happened to me was, what, eight years ago? They're 10 and 12 now, so a long time ago. Oops. So at the bins, I also got these. Oh, my God. I think it's from the same person. They're even falling. Now I can't find it. Little tiny acorns, little wood apples. And little pine cones. I don't know what these are for. Like filler or something. Oh, jeez. A mother using her kids to get in the doctor early by kids being bad. Oh, no. That's horrible. Um, I lost the pine cone. I lost the pine cone. Dang it. I don't know where it went. It fell. Um, I did find something really cool at the bins. And it was in a... Um, it was in a notebook. And I think... I, I wish... Um, Vinny was here. He would get a kick out of this. Oh, Pop Popery? Maybe. I mean, yeah. It's like little... They're hard, though. They're like hard. Oh, whoops. Jeez, break stuff. Oh my gosh. That's fun. You know what, Michelle? You, you can do is get a designated box with packing peanuts and set it aside. So when he wants to jump in it and spill over, you could put him in that designated, you know, box. Like when my kids were little and stuff, I would have. Like, they'd want to get into my stuff. And I was like, you know what? You can look into this. Or here's a box that you can play in. Or I'd set, you know, bubble wrap on the side for them. Just to get them distracted, you know? Have a... My kids still play with boxes. At <laughs> 10 and 12, they have Nerf guns. And they use the boxes like shields and stuff. Yeah, my cats love boxes. They love scratching them. Oh... I got some wrapping paper. I'm going to try to get more crafty with my shipping stuff. So I got this wrapping for the bins. So if you guys buy from me, you know, you might see better wrapping. Okay. So these are cool. And someone had put these back. Oh, primitive decoration. Put candles in. Okay. Put 
candle in them. Okay, in the middle. Okay. So, oh God. So this was, I don't know how, I think I paid, well, this is by weight, so I paid uh, probably $5. It's probably a couple pounds. But um, their pictures, yeah, it's not pretty wrapping paper. They're pictures of famous uh, actors and actresses, and then it has like a list of all the movies they're in. They're photographs. Um, see? And it was a whole booklet. I didn't want to pay for the uh, the folder, you know, they were in because that would cost extra. So I just pulled them all out, but they're still in the... Um, yeah, so they are like, okay. So they're actual like... They're, they're portraits. And... It says, um, Spring by Intent Portrait by John Ingsting, 1965, Jewel Smith, Public Relations, Roxbury Dive, Beverly Hills, Crestview. Yeah, Vinny would love this. So, and then it, so I don't know much about them, but I just thought they were so cool. And I haven't even really looked through them. I just grabbed them. And someone had put them back. They weren't interested in them. I don't know why. Um... Let's see. So I just, oh, look at this one. Like this one. Okay, Jack, some, some of these guys I don't even know. Jackie Coogan. But I just noticed this. Wouldn't Vinny love that? I don't know who this is. So, oh my gosh. So. Oh, Anne Crico by Verga. And it looks like they tried to sell this one for $20. Because there's pencil writing. It says 20 right there. I know, right, Julianne? When someone puts something back, I'm like, oh, yes, I'll take it. So someone tried, I don't, I don't know. i got to research these. But, um, let's see. Okay, let's see some of these. Oh, well, we know who this is. <laughs> What's his name? Garden Center Theater. Mickey Rooney. Mickey Rooney. I don't know. Is, is he still alive? If he's still alive, he'd be like 90-something. But there's a whole, there, so there's a huge stack of them. I know, me too. Oh, hey, you're from Seattle. Yes, yeah, raining here too. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I do that too. Like, I'll just like, I'll just like stand next to them, kind of like look through other stuff. I know. Some of and, um, and then I'll like, you know, won't say anything like do, do, do. And if they walk away, I'm like, boop, I'm right there. <laughs> so some of these, okay. Oh, wow. There's several in these. So this, a lot of these will, ha they have the prices on the back. Oh, yeah, it looked like Betty Page. So this one, I guess, was try, they tried to sell for $2. Edward, Ed, Edward Everett. So it looks like someone tried to sell these. I don't know, like a flea market or antique mall. Um, they had it in the booklet. I took it out of the, the folder, the ring three-ringed folder, because I didn't want to pay for the three-ringed folder because I'm cheap. <laughs> but it cost me an extra dollar. Um... So, I'm not sure. Let's see. Oh, wow. This one's pretty cool. And on the back. Ooh. 
Lisa Minnelli. This one they tried to sell for ten dollars. This is a smaller one. <laughs> Put on your acting skills. You know, in the past, um, in the past, I've had people mention to me, "Hey, if you don't want that item, let me know." And there's been times where you know I decide not to get an item, so I'll, I'll give it to them. Um. Oh, you're melting? It's cold here. <gasps> and, um, but, uh, sometimes I'm like, oh, I'm actually going to get this, you know. But there's been many times where people have said something. So this one's signed. Yeah, this is actually signed. This isn't a print. They signed it. I can see the pen mark. Wow, he's good looking. Look at that guy. <laughs> yeah, you, uh, Joanne, Michelle, you guys need to go thrifting. They tried to sell this for $20, and it's signed. Edward, uh, Edward Brines. Do you guys know that guy? I'm not familiar with him. Oh, wow, Laura, I wonder if it's, how much it's worth. So I paid, okay, so this is kind of heavy. So I got all of these, oh my gosh, they're full. All of these photos by the pound. So I paid a little, like a little over $2. Oh, I don't know. I guess I could Google him. That You might be right. I'll have to Google him. And, um, so I probably paid, well, plus tax, this, this feels like a couple pounds. So I probably paid $5, which is not that much money for all of these. Now let's, let's see. I mean, two, I don't know, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh, wow. Look at this one. Um, I mean, I think there's over a hundred here. I know it was really strange to be in the bins. Um, isn't that weird? So I don't know. Like why, why were they at the bins? Maybe someone just like gave up, gave up on selling these and just donated them. I don't know. Um, wow. Oh my gosh. A Ava Gabor. Look at how glamorous she was. Oh, she died in 95? Wow, I didn't I didn't realize she died that long ago. That was a long time ago. I remember her. She's the lady that smacked a She's the lady. I think she's the lady that smacked a policeman with her glove. <laughs> yeah, these are all old-time actors. Um, there's not, uh, there's not like a suit, there's not a lot of super famous ones. Some of these I, I don't recognize too well. So I don't know. Yeah, I got all these at the bins. Um, I, and I didn't even, I didn't, I didn't have time to look through all of them. I just grabbed them. I, I knew I, I could probably sell them. See, I don't know, like, if this guy, Pat O'Brien... If he'd be worth much, I think more of the glamorous ones would sell, but I don't know. And some of these, I don't think are big time actors. Some of them. Oh my gosh. Okay. Does this guy not look like Vinny a little bit? <laughs> they thick hair? <gasps> yes. Jaja Moore slapped the policeman. Yeah. With the, with the glove. She smacked him with the glove. Oh my gosh, are you serious? Yeah, I think some people, they just, like, they give up. Some people, they retire, and they have antique space. Oh, hi, Teresa! But this is signed, too. But doesn't this kind of look like Vinny? <laughs> it 
It does look like Vinny's dad. Like it could be a Vinny's dad or Vinny's brother. This is so. Look at the hair. Um, let's see. Let's see if I find some more. So yeah, I'm gonna update you guys on what I'm gonna do with these. I'm probably not gonna sell them a lot. Probably individually. Um. But yeah, all this cost me five dollars. I think there's over a hundred. Um, let's see. Oh, Imogen Coca. Like she's got the fun bangs haircut. Oh yeah, totally. And look, I think this is like an old comedic couple. And then Mar see, I don't know who this is. Martha Ray. Okay, so this is how she looked when she was older, but look at her when she was really young. So I don't know if these were like headshots that they had. It says William Morris Agency. Were these headshots that they gave to agencies? And I like that the person that owned these had the list of movies they were in. Emma Jean. Oh, that's a cool name. Oh, she died in the 80s. Look how pretty she was. Yeah, and this is so cool. Is um, Yeah, like William Morris Agency. I think some of these are headshots. This is Talua Bankhead. She was... She didn't live very long, 1902 to 1968. So she, she didn't live that long. Um, I don't know. This picture looks like she's tired. Maybe an old agency? You know what, Laura? You might be right. I don't know. Um, Peggy Cass? Oh, wow. Dina Merrill. Do any of these guys look, any of these ladies look familiar? Oh, look at that lady's dress. This is definitely like 1960s. Um, Jaja Gabor. Oh, this lady has a dog. Oh, Tallulah Bankhead. She's famous. Okay. This lady posing next to a Buddhist statue. Claudia McNeil. Oh my. Was she a famous comedian? She looks like she's a comedian. <laughs> There's her little dog. Her. Wow. 1897 to 1987. Her Hermione Gingold. That's a lady, right? Is that a lady? Yeah, I know. All these are older. Um, I don't recognize a lot of them, but I know they're <laughs> they're older. I know. I wonder how much... I'm trying to find one that I recognize. I, I love watching older older movies. I haven't been watching them lately, but um, me and my kids have been watching old science fiction movies. Yeah, it did look like a guy in drag, but I think that was a woman. Did they have drag back in the 60s? Yeah, I don't know. I think that might be a wig, but I don't know if they had drag in the 60s. 
I know they had drag in the 80s, 80s, 90s, you know, and up, but did they have drag in the 60s? Or if they did, they probably didn't. Oh, really? Back in the 60s? This person was famous in the 40s, 50s, and 60s. Possible? I, yeah. Well, um, you know, back then they would have, you know, kind of like acts and flamboyance and they wouldn't, you know, talk about it. Like Liberace, he had his boyfriend and they told everyone it was his, um, what do you say? His friend or worker or something? I don't know. <laughs> Those movies were already old in the 60s. <laughs> well, I'm just I'm just looking at um, the movies they were in. So uh, the movies that they uh, they uh, posted are from the 30s to the 70s. Like she was in The Thrill of It All, 1963. Oh, maybe Underground Drag Acts. Oh, okay. Let's see. Oh my gosh. I'm trying to find. Oh, I've never seen him in movies. Uh, Lee Marvin. He's been a lot of stuff. The Dirty Dozen, Hell in the Pacific, Monty Walsh, Prime Cut. He was big in the 50s, 60s, 70s, and 80s. I recognize him. Oh. Wow, well, I, I recognize this guy. Fabian. Look at how cute he was. Oh my god, he was in a movie called A Bullet for Pretty Boy, 1970. A Bullet for Pretty... The Wild Racers, The Devil's Eight... Little Lauren, Big John, Disco Fever. Oh my god, he was big in the 60s. He was in so many movies in the 60s. Look how cute he was. He was like a heartthrob. Look. He was a heartthrob back in the 60s. Ha! Huh. Yeah, I think my mom mentioned this guy. So my mom would have been a teenager around uh, when he was famous. That's funny. <laughs> oh, wow. She was in a lot of movies. From the uh, 1917 uh, to the 19, uh, like, 60s. Well, no. she. I think she died in 1963. Anyways, she was an older actress. She's got the big eyes. She was in a movie called Naughty But Nice, 1937. Oh, I like this picture. This is Ruta Lee. She was born in 1935. Oh, she was in Seven Brides for Seven Brothers. That's a good movie. Funny. Oh, she's in Funny Face. Well, for Doomsday Machine, Paradactyl Woman. Oh my gosh, she was in a movie called Paradactyl Woman from Beverly Hills, 1997. <laughs> That's funny. Wow. Her surgery money for his boyfriend, super famous actor, blanking out. Huh. Gertrude Berg. This woman looks a little masculine. Gert and her name was Gertrude Berg. She was in Effie and Laura, Make a Wish, The Goldbergs, Main Street to Broadway, multiple TV appearances. She died in, oh, she's 1898 to 1966. She didn't live very long either. Gertrude. 
June Havoc. What movies was she in? Red O. Oh. Four Jackson is Joe Can't Stop the Music. Lee. There's so many of these. I keep showing them. Um. Look at this one. He looks like he'd be in gangster, like the mob movies and stuff. He was in Detective Story, Abbott Costello Go to Mars, Blackboard Jungle, Naked City. Monique, and here, Monique Van Vuren. She was born 1925. I know. I'm having a feeling that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do pretty well. Let's see. So anyways, that was a lot of them. So that was a pretty good find. And when I did find those, there was another guy there. And he's like, oh, yeah, those are really cool. And I'm like, why didn't you get them? After research, show us the expensive ones. Okay. Do you, so you guys think I should do it as an auction? Blackboard junk. Blackboard Jungle is a great movie. Ooh, is it? Something I need to watch? There's an old-time movie that's one of my favorite old-time movies. Oh, I forget what it's called. It won awards. Um, it's about the three... It's about World War II. Yes, I will update you guys. Oh, Al Pacino, Dog Day Afternoon. I think I saw that a long time ago. Um... But it's about the three World War II veterans, and they come home from the war, and one of them is married to a woman he's not in love with, and there's a girl that's in love with him, and then one of them lost both his hands, actually in real life, in the war, and he's in this movie. He has hooks for hands. I have the DVD downstairs somewhere, but it's one of my favorite older movies. I love it, love it, love it forget the um i i forget the name of it but it's so good and the the guy in the movie he wasn't an actor but he had lost both his hands he had them as hooks and stuff and the acting is and it is so good and i feel like the storyline was beyond its time because it i don't know because the one girl that liked the guy that was married She's like, but I love him, Dad, you know, and he's not in love with his wife. And the dad's like, you can't be going after him and stuff. And, and I don't know, it's kind of the whole subject was beyond its time that they made the movie. I feel like, I don't know, it was, it's just done really well. It won awards, too. Yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't know if I should just, I'm going to research it. Um, I mean, especially the ones that are signed, you know, I mean, that is cool. That is actually signed. Um, and I know I'm only 43, so I'm sure some of these actors were huge back in the day and I'm just not recognizing them. Um, I bet my mom could recognize more of these, uh, actors than me, but, um, I'll definitely have to Google them. That's going to be, take me a while. So the last thing I should I found this classic book and I, I usually I, I find these here and there now it did have some writing in it but I just hated seeing this not get picked up this was one of my favorite books when I was a kid uh no he didn't have that um I don't know if they put a certain name to it he um he was just like delayed in a lot of stuff they didn't have a certain name to it. Okay. So the story behind this book is when I was younger, or probably around uh, 10 years old, around there, give or take, uh, my mom didn't really buy, she was a single mom, raised by a single mom, only child, and my mom didn't really spend a lot of money on me. And the books I got from her were either used or I'd get uh, books from my grandma or, aunt, grandma or whatever. And I remember seeing this book, I don't know, from the library or friend's house or whatever. 
And we saw it in the store, brand new. I said, oh, mom, I want this book so, so bad. I, you know, I love the poems in it and stuff. And I think back then, God, it might have been like $20, which was a lot of money back in the, you know, um, 80s. And she's like, well, are you going to read it? You know, if I'm going to spend 20 bucks, you got to read it. And I said, yes, yes, I promise. So she ended up buying it for me. She hardly ever bought new books for me because we were on a budget being a single mom. And I read this book over and over and over again to the point where I memorized by heart some of the poems. And my favorite poem was, and after I read it over and over again, I read the poems to my mom and I memorized them by heart. My mom was like happy because she was like, oh, that was money worth spent. Oh, that might have been it. The best years of our lives. That sounds familiar. I think that's the movie I love. That movie is so good. I've seen it probably five or six times. Okay, now I can't find the... Gosh, I'm back. <laughs> I said, do you want to resume? I said, yes. Anyways, I wanted to show my favorite poem out of this book. Sick. Am I back? It was buffering. And I said, do you want to resume? And I said, yes. I'm back! <laughs> Sick. I memorized this by heart when I was a kid. This was the author. Shel Silstein. He is the author that wrote the book, The Giving Tree. If you guys want to cry about if you have children or even close relative, read The Giving Tree. This man was a genius. The Giving Tree is so beautifully written. And um, some of these poems are just so unique and so funny. He was just, he had a gift for writing. He definitely had a gift. Oh, yeah. The giving tree, just think about, just the tree just gave and gave and gave. <laughs> it's just like, oh my God. It makes me cry every time I read it. Because it's like, you know, with parents and their children or even grandparents or even if you're, a, you know, a grown adult child to your parents, you just give and give and it's like, you know, you know, you want, you know, cut me down so you have a place to sit. It's like, oh my God. And there's another book that makes me cry. Um, what's it called? I think it's all, like, I love you so much. And I have boys. So it's about a son. And when, and it talks about the different phases of their growth. And when you were, whatever, this, you know, years old, you know, you would do this and this. And it would drive me crazy. But at night, I would, crawl, I would sneak into your room and I would hold you and, you know, sing to you. And um, it makes me cry every time because then the, the mom gets old. She becomes old and she calls her son, who is now a father. And he comes to the old folks home and he rocks his old grand, his mom, who's a grandmother now. <laughs> it's like, oh my God. It's so... And every time I read it, I cry. <laughs> oh yeah, dogs. Oh God. My, we watched the movie A Dog's Purpose. I was crying. My kids almost had tears in their eyes. That movie is a tearjerker. I'm sure the book is, too. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Brian's song. Or another tearjerker is The Beach. Or, be not Beach, Beaches. Where's that pencil? Especially when the daughter finds her mom on the ground, de dead. Oh my god, that movie's so sad. So anyways, that was my find from the Goodwill Outlet. And I think I did pretty good. Oh no. Oh no. That sounds awful. Oh god. That's too sad for me. Oh, ads on TV can make me cry. You know, 
Sometimes crying is a good release. I cry probably at least once a week. I've never seen the notebook. Everyone says it's so sad. I've never seen it. Yeah, I usually cry at least once a week. Yeah, that sounds disturbing. I don't know. That, oh God. I have a hard time reading about pets and stuff that get abused. <laughs> Joy, <laughs> you want to go to the bins? I know, I have so much stuff. It's like, okay. When I go to the bins, I have to be picky. Michelle, we need to watch the notebook and see if everyone is telling the truth about it being sad. No, I know. I don't know why I haven't watched it. Um, I have to be in the right mood. The I really like comedies, and right now I'm watching the all the seasons of thir um, Thirty, not Thirty Rock, Thirty Rock. Yeah. Kim. Uh, <laughs> we should watch it together on live chat. There you go. Oh my god, I get a lot of minutes if, if, if I was watching the movie. Live chat, we could all talk about it. That would be kind of funny. Oh, I'm putting everything back in the box. Yeah, or the horror stuff. I don't know. I don't like horror stuff. That's, no. I do like science fiction. Yeah, earn those minutes. I do like science fiction. I love science fiction and um, I, I love comedies. <laughs> Once one person starts to... <laughs> but yeah, I have to be in the mood for like dramas and stuff. But a 30 Rock is a good one. No horror. Oh my God, I hate horror. Like those Saw movies. My husband used to go see horror movies like Saw. And I'm just like, that sounds awful. It just sounds horrible to me. <laughs> like, oh my gosh. I was just like, ugh. I do, I do like weird science fiction though. Not the horror science fiction or the like super sad stuff, but like the stuff that kind of makes you think and stuff. Oh, did you guys, were you able to tell me anything about this? Is this a Fenton bird or anything? This heavy glass bird with like the rainbowy kind of sheen. Oh, you like seeing movies that make you jump. Oh, but not slasher movies. Oh God, the centipede. I heard about that one. Yes, yeah, sci-fi watch upload it. There are some weird psychological. Oh, you. Oh, it's not a sale right now, Nicole. I'm just chit chatting. There are some weird. I I saw a YouTube video about all the weird uh, science fiction horror movies out there, and there's some weird ones. Like I don't, I don't I can't even talk about it on YouTube. Yeah. The old, the old stuff's better. And with my kids, I say they can watch the older stuff because it doesn't show all the blood and guts and stuff. It was more psychological. One of them was a little freaky. Um, anxiety. One of them was really a little freaky and cool things I didn't realize. It was a, it was a Night of the Living Dead. And it was black and white. And I thought, oh, that's not bad. I remember that one. And there was a scene where the daughter turns into a zombie and she's stabbing her mom. <laughs> and the mom's like, oh. She's stabbing her over and over. And I'm like, oh, my God. I don't remember this part. And there was no blood or guts or anything. But it was just like psychologically it was kind of creepy. And my 10-year-old was like, oh, no. Oh, oh. And he kind of had nightmares that night. And I'm like, oh, God. I don't remember that part. <laughs> It was really creepy. The daughter was stabbing her mom over and over again, killing her as a zombie. I was like, oh my god. Everything else was fine. That part was just like mom feel for me. I was like, okay. That wasn't a good choice. <laughs> Do not remember that. Yeah, it was, I don't know. It's funny because like, it's what you remember in those movies. Opal glass? 
where is it? I don't know, Teresa. Yeah, it kind of, like, look, look at the sheen on it. It's like that oil spill look, but it's heavy white glass. So it's milk glass with like an oil spill kind of look to it. Opal glass. Is it, Fe I thought it might be Fenton. Um, I, I don't know if I'm wrong. Moon glow? I don't know. I could look up, I could Google those. I can't write on my phone, but. But I definitely don't want to sell this until I re research it. It has the seam going down from the mold of the glass. Show called The Lady in Red thinking it was the Gene Wilder. Oh, Woman in Red comedy. It was the wrong movie. A woman starts stabbing another woman. It was awful. I was a kid. Oh, no. That is awful. Nicole, you're gardening. It must be pretty where you're at. It's raining here. I was showing my Goodwill outlet haul. My phone buffered twice. Anyways. I thought it was so pretty. So some of this stuff is going to be for sale on Tuesday. Like I said before, yeah, their names were so familiar in those movies, Woman in Red. Oh, I love Gene Wilder. He was such a good actor. Oh, my God. He was awesome. You went to the bins last Monday? Nicole always finds the coolest stuff at her bins. I watch her hauls sometimes. I get so jealous. I'm like, my goodness. I think I did pretty good this last haul. I don't know if you were watching Nicole, but some of this stuff's going to be in my sale. Some of it I have to research. But, oh my gosh, if I could sell those pictures, like, even like 10 bucks each, someone do the math, 10 times, oh, 10 times 100 is a thousand dollars, right? Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. I was stopped and we didn't call body break. <laughs> oh gosh. Oh, Nicole, is, yeah, at my bins, too, there's weird rules. So what I've heard from other watchers, um, well, you know, Michelle, call ahead of time because the bins all over are getting some weird rules. Now, some people have said the the changes are, is like the same. You don't need you don't need gloves. You don't need masks. You don't need to be six feet apart. That's what some people are saying. Now, my bins. So the Portland bins, it says you have to have a mask, gloves on, only one person at a bin at a time, uh, and you have to try to stay six feet apart, and you can't combine stuff together to get a lower rate on the uh, pricing. Um, mm. Oh, no. Yeah, I wonder if your, those kids had nightmares after watching those videos, Laura. Um. So, and then I went to the Vancouver bins and you didn't have to wear gloves, but you had to wear masks and the rules were kind of more lackadaisical about keeping six feet apart. So, and a trap, oh no. So you got, if you guys go to the Goodwill bins or even like your local thrift store, you could always call them first or just have masks and a gloves in your car before you go. Cause some people, some places are requiring gloves. So I have a bunch of rubber gloves in my car. Oh, traffic patterns and a traffic cop. Oh my gosh. That's weird, Nicole. You got in trouble for going the wrong way. <laughs> so I was, I, I pretty much followed the rules. There was one time I, was, I didn't pay attention. I was picking through the bin that someone else was picking in. The guy told me, oh, one person per bin. I was like, oh, okay. You have to snake through the outlet. It's weird. Oh, that is weird, Nicole. Oh my God, they make you walk back. It's like being at school. You gotta walk back. Yeah, and they're not, in the bins, they're not selling anything in the display cases anymore at, at the Google Outlet. Oh. <laughs> Oh, Laura, yeah. They couldn't show their friends. <laughs> um, 
I was going to say, oh, yeah, so Joanne here in, um, so I know California, they're having that rule where everyone has to wear a mask when you go out. Oregon is going to be mandating that rule on uh, this coming up Wednesday that everyone goes out, has a mask. And my husband says Washington will probably follow that rule, but I don't know. He says, oh, it goes California, then Oregon, then Washington. So I don't know if that's true. But Oregon, um, they're saying everyone that goes out has to wear a mask. So I don't I ordered some new masks from Amazon, some black material ones, and then my kids didn't really like them. So I ended up buying some of the throwaway ones. Um, not throw, you know, the kinds the doctors wear that they like those better. So I bought a bunch of those. Walk back out of the exit door and going through the door. Oh my gosh. Well, that's kind of silly. <laughs> I mean, how is it? I don't know. That's a little silly. Like, I can understand wearing the masks, but, you know, before masks were mandated and stuff, I don't know. I saw so many people, like, coughing on crap and sneezing, and I don't know. It was, just, I don't know, people are disgusting. <laughs> like, I, I don't know if I mentioned on my channel before, but, like, before, when all this started kicking in before masks were required, I saw a grandma with her little kid, and the little kid was usually, literally at the height where she was coughing on all the fruits and vegetables at Target. And I was like, oh my God, this is so gross. <laughs> oh no. Kids are so funny. One of your criminals are at the door. Uh-oh, someone's at the door. I know, isn't that disgusting? Uh, hold on, guys. Ho hold on, hold on. Oh my god. It's just a package. Oh my god. Oh, bye, Nathaniel. Oh, yeah. Um, I, I didn't say anything. I should have, Joanne. I should have. But, I mean, I've said this before. Like, I've seen the thrift store and this lady was like coughing open mouth not covering like on as she was looking through stuff and this was like several months ago when the coronavirus was like first getting you know noticed and stuff on the news and then when i went that road trip to seattle i mentioned went to a, a rest stop restroom lady goes in the bathroom and with her kid change the diaper, go to the bathroom, comes right back out and doesn't wash her hands. And everyone's saying, oh, it's just common sense to wash your hands. I was like, you know what? <laughs> There's people that just don't wash their hands. They just don't. It's disgusting. I've seen it so many times, um, like in restaurants and stuff. Like I, like customer, she like, yeah, it's disgusting. Yeah, right, Teresa? And uh, she was sitting with a big group of people. I go to the bathroom, wash her hands. She goes out of the stall and she just walks on by. And I'm like, oh God, <laughs> so gross. They th oh, she's opening food. Oh no, why was she unsealing things? Oh, okay, Joanne, I'll see you later. See you later. Taryn, why was she opening the food? I know, Lori, it, people, I don't know. I, I say as people are disgusting. <laughs> this is like, how can you not wash your hands after going into a public bathroom? Like, that's just, I don't know. That doesn't make any sense. And everyone's like, well, you know, to be coronavirus, just follow, like, cover your mouth when you cough, stay six feet away, uh, wash your hands to do the bathroom. But there's so many times where I see people not doing any of that. How they're not. Oh, I know. That was in Goodwill a week ago. This lady, she had her mask on. Her nose was exposed. And I was like, oh, okay. I make them a donate. Oh, that's cool. Oh, wow. So you have to be careful, Yarny. That Yarny zebra and stuff. Oh, that's weird. Maybe, I don't know, maybe something was wrong with her. 
Because why would you just be opening, like, unsealing food and stuff? That sounds strange to me. So my dad has some, um, not all good details, but some mental issues. And he actually got yelled at for not covering his mouth when he coughed. Um, so I was like, Dad, you got to cover your mouth. And I visited him a week ago, and I wasn't sitting close to him. But he started, he coughed. He's a smoker. And he coughed. He wasn't covered his mouth. I'm like, oh, God. I'm like, Dad. I was like, ugh. He's like, what? But, you know, you stay home. Yeah, probably right now it's a good idea. Oh, yeah. It, it sounds like she wasn't right in the head. Um, you're at high risk, too. Yeah, that's scary. That is scary. Um, so my mom is not at high risk, but she's in her, um, she's at a kind of, kind of a high risk age, which is early seventies. Um, so not like super high risk, not super old, but she's trying to be real careful. And then my dad, he has a lot of health issues and I'm like, dad, you can't get sick, you know? And he's like, well, he's like, that doesn't mean I'm going to die. And I was like, well, no, but you're, it's not going to be fun if you get sick and you have all these other health issues. He has liver issues, kidney issues, mental issues, <laughs> bone issues, you know. So I'm just like, and like I said before, I'm an only child. So that would not be fun to having to help him. Bubble Girl, that's me. Uh, did you ever see that movie called Bubble Boy from a long time ago? He lived in a bubble. It was, um, oh my God, the actor. What's his name? <laughs> oh, not Sylvester Stallone. Um, from Greece, the actor from Greece. He, he was when he was real young. I think it was in the 70s. It was the movie Bubble Boy. I used to get looks when at the doctor wearing my mask. Oh, you would? People are weird. I don't know why they'd give you looks. Was it Robbie Benson? No, no. Yeah, what was that? Uh, no, the actor from Grace. When I went to the store, I was in and out within 10 minutes. John Travolta, yes. John Travolta was in the movie Bubble Boy when he was real young. Yeah, John Travolta. And that was based on a true story. Yeah, that was based on a true story. There are other people like out there like that, you know, that um, have to be super careful and stuff. Yeah, I have a hand sanitizer that's uh, in a little bottle that I refill on my purse. And I have it with me. I have rubber gloves in the car. And I have masks. Yeah, there's a lot of people that aren't wearing masks in my town. Uh, my town has some kind of well, conservative people. I'm pretty liberal. I actually, I'm a moderate. I'm not liberal. I'm a moderate. But um, there's a lot of them that refuse to wear masks. They don't want to wear masks. Uh, so they don't. So, I don't know. It is what it is. I wear, I wear the mask. You know what? I don't have to order everything online, but I'm starting to like kind of get used to ordering stuff online. That's the person at the door was a delivery guy, like ordering it on Amazon and eBay and from these YouTube live sales. You're used to it, the masks. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm not used to the masks, but I don't mind wearing them. Yeah, there's always people who don't. I mean, they are hard to breathe in. I feel like I have a hard, I do have allergies. So sometimes it's, it, I'm always trying to, you know, catch my breath and stuff. Uh, I've been having kind of some issues with breathing lately, not COVID-19, but just from allergies and stuff. Cause I'm always stuffed up and um, I'm always like, I don't know, I just have allergy issues, the pollen and stuff. But um, my son has some allergies too. I love not wearing makeup with a mask. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> or I try to wear the sunglasses with the mask and then the sunglasses get all fogged up. I'm like, I'm trying to protect my health and my eyes. <laughs> um, but I don't mind wearing the mask. The, the only problem is I miss traveling. And I guess airplanes, a lot of the airlines are requiring you to wear a mask. So if I wanted to fly to Hawaii, well, not now, but eventually... 
I don't know if I don't want to wear a mask for five hours straight in a plane. They are hard to breathe in. Yeah, well, you know, there's the, there's the clear shields you can wear. Some people at the Goodwill bins that work there are wearing the shields. Yeah. Yeah, I like wearing sunglasses because it protects my eyes and I squint a lot in the sun. Wrinkles. Yeah. <laughs> I don't like wearing makeup every day. I'm wearing some makeup now, not a lot. Oh, really? Eyes are a main route of transmission. Ooh. Yeah, certain states, they've just thrown out all the rules. They're just like, whatever. So, I don't know. I feel bad for the people that live in retirement homes and stuff or have health issues. Yeah, I bet. You know, because, like, my dad, he lives in a retirement home, and they're not letting them dine together. He says he hasn't seen his friends in, like, months. They're serving them just in their apartments because they're isolating everyone. So it's incredibly sad for all those, you know, seniors that are living in retirement homes. They don't want them to get sick, but at the same time, they're, they're lonely and they're secluded. And I don't know, it just kind of irritates me when young people are like, well, just stay home, just stay home. And I was like, I, I don't know, my heart feels, I call my dad almost every single day. I visit him a, a couple times outside. I didn't wear a mask, but I stayed like six feet away from him. I just feel bad for all those elderly people that are just stuck inside because they don't want to get sick. And everyone's telling them, if you're scared, just stay home. It's like, it's psychologically, it's not healthy to be secluded from people for months and months at a time, no matter how old you are. So it's, it's sad. I don't know. I just, I just feel bad. And when people say it, I'm like, oh, because I, I don't know. I have a special spot for my dad. He's all by himself. And, you know, he lives alone. Are you okay, Mateo? Oh, your, your nose is bleeding? Uh-oh. My son's nose is bleeding. Hi, Brick House Salvage and Antiques, Steve Borgax. Now, I do wear... Laura, I do wear makeup. I actually wear makeup now, but it seems like I'm not, like you can't even tell. So, I don't know, was it worth it? <laughs> Teresa, oh, you're saying John Travolta now? Teresa, we already said John Travolta. <laughs> the bubble boy. I told my husband this is going to kill some, yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I mean, a lot of the elderly people, um, they can die just from getting the regular flu. Oh, the, okay. Zebra instead makes you a zebra. That's the YouTube name. Oh, I get it. Yeah, so, um, and I, and my dad was like, I'm so sick of, well, he said, I'm just so tired of, you know what's happening and stuff and I'm like I know dad I was like you just you know nothing we can do about it oh yeah exactly oh your phone's lagging Teresa that's what I was wondering I was like why are you saying John Travolta now <laughs> okay bye Michelle I was like John Travolta the bubble boy that was a while ago but um even if you watch like science fiction movies now, um, you know, it's, it's, I don't know. It's kind of eerie about what's happening. <laughs> That's okay, Teresa. I just thought that was funny. I'm like, what are you talking about? Um, but anywho, okay. Bye, Nicole. Got a phone call. But I am going to head out. I've been on here for a long time over two hours now if you count the other live but anyways i go i got i hope you guys have a really good weekend yeah the purge it does it does feel like the purge seriously feel seriously like the purge like science fiction movies are coming to life 
Now it's kind of it's kind of eerie. But um, oh thanks. So some of the stuff's gonna be for sale. My YouTube live sale, and some will not. <laughs> so we'll see. Oh, you missed the hole. Uh, here's one chicken at the Google Outlet. Lennox vase. Oh, and you know it's buried, but all my um, pictures of old, uh, old, old movie stars. Yes. Oh, it's buried now. You can watch the replay. That's interesting. But I'm gonna get going. Yeah, it's fun hanging out. Okay, I will see you guys later. All right, bye.